As a doctor, I often had night shifts and as a Cambridge medical student, I often had fast approaching deadlines and we sleep for one third of our lives. So it's maybe one of the most important things that we do. I've broken this down into eight simple evidence backed ways that we can use to optimize our sleep. Nine months ago, before I started implementing this, I got anonymous feedback that said I looked disinterested and tired. And now I get feedback saying I'm enthusiastic and proactive. So it's clearly worked. Let's get right into the video. I want to start by talking about some common myths and mistakes that we've probably all fallen for. The first one is stopping caffeine five to eight hours before you sleep and it's way earlier than you think. The second one is leaving your blinds open and sleeping with the moon and rising with the sun. That's a total myth. And the third one that I fell for personally was not to exercise in the evening because it'll ruin my sleep. And it's just not true. If you keep falling for these myths and having suboptimal sleep, then you're just increasing your risk of several diseases and also ultimately your risk of death. So let's use science to guide our sleep. Step one, black out your sleep. This study looking at more than 500,000 people found that light at night, L-A-N as they wrote it, has detrimental effects on your sleep. And this extends to things like artificial lights, smartphones, just table lamps, you know, night lights, whatever it might be. And as a little backstory, when I was at Cambridge in the student halls, I would sleep with my blinds wide open to the detriment of my partner at the time. She hated it. But what it did is when the sun came up, I'd wake up, you know, the birds chirping, the sun shining on my face, and I just woke up way more naturally and I, I really enjoyed it. But in hindsight, it was making me more tired throughout the day. And I'd end up having afternoon naps basically every day. And I wish that I knew about blacking out my sleep way earlier. So nowadays I just black out my sleep, but I use a blackout sleep mask and I can take this wherever I go. And I can't really afford blackout out sleep blinds at the moment and I've noticed that I have way fewer interruptions in my sleep and I can control my sleeping schedule more powerfully which is really important when I'm doing night shifts for example at the hospital and I need to sleep in the daytime as well. On the topic of blocking out sensations I'm going to talk about blocking sound or what to do best with sounds in step six. Step two is to dodge the coffee. Now everyone metabolizes caffeine at a different rate to be honest I can't give solid advice but I can give averages and just tell you to stop your caffeine way earlier than you think. This scientific study suggested to stop caffeine nine hours before you sleep if you have about 100 milligrams which is a usual coffee and if you're having up to 200 milligrams stopping 13 hours before you sleep which is most of the day and, and basically just stop earlier than you think. I stopped having caffeine at about midday so it's like 12 26 right now so I'm obviously not very strict with it but it's a good way to look at things. Failing this if you look at this study it says caffeine makes it take longer to get to sleep, it reduces your source of sleep time, it reduces reduces sleep efficiency and it just worsens how you feel about sleep as well so it's really not worth it having it later in the day and I have a video going through my ultimate caffeine guide so go and check that out this and step seven have had the biggest impact on my energy levels and on my sleep as well and to be honest when I got that anonymous feedback when I was working in the hospital saying I looked disinterested and tired it was quite disheartening I thought I was doing a really good job my colleagues liked me my patients were very grateful but it seemed that I was coming across as tired and I guess I just wasn't used to this new kind of sleeping schedule and I'm sure you know how it feels when you get a review that didn't quite go the way you expected because in your mind you're doing everything right but then people say that there's certain aspects I need fix fixing. Uh, obviously I took this as constructive criticism and I optimized things like my caffeine and my vitamin D of course which I'll make videos on later on and it worked my next feedback was incredible and to quote someone said I was one of the best doctors they've worked with which was a big boost and I'm, I'm really glad that I made the changes that I did. Step three is to take some sleep supplements. Science shows that glycine helps sleep in rats and in humans it might subjectively enhance your sleep. So the next day when you ask people how did you sleep, it'll improve what their responses are. Magnesiums might help humans to sleep but more research is needed from what I've seen. So it's not the strongest research base and like a lot of supplements it's not clear whether or not you should take it but from my own anecdotal experience when I take the magnesium and the glycine it kind of makes me feel drowsy and it just helps me to get to sleep more quickly and I do feel a bit better the next day but obviously you can try it and just see if it works for you or not uh, and what I do take is basically three grams of glycine at night time and 500 milligrams of magnesium bisglycinate now this is a tablet and this one's a powder sort of like crystallized powder to be honest it tastes like sugar it actually tastes quite good but once again like it's not like my greatest recommendation
recommendation. Try it out if you want. And if you have tried magnesium and glycine, then let me know in the comments and let me know what your experiences have been. Step four is to stop eating earlier. This study says that you should stop eating about three hours before bedtime. Uh, and the research varies, it's like two to three hours, but definitely not right before bedtime. Your body will start digesting, which is quite an active process, and it'll just kind of ruin your sleep. So back in the day, I used to weigh 58 kilograms. Now we're about 80 kilograms. So, you know, I put on a lot of bulk and a lot of it is muscle. And what I would do is just get as many calories in throughout the day as I could. And that included right before bed. One thing that I used to do was have a thousand calorie shake. It was like oats and protein powder and oranges and bananas and oil and peanut butter. And it, to be honest, it was just gross. But I used to do this right before bed. And of course it was having an impact on my sleep. But at that point I didn't care because I just wanted to get bigger. In hindsight, it was a really stupid thing to do. Now what I do is I intermittent fast and I'll make a video on all the benefits of that going forward. But that means I stop at least three hours before I go to bed. And if you take it to the extreme, people like Brian Johnson, he stops eating at 11 a.m. And he's found that that has the best impacts on his sleep. Parents would be like, stop eating right before bed. Uh, and I was obviously stubborn and younger and I'd be like, whatever, I thought I knew best. And I'm sure this has happened to you as well, where your parents tell you something, you kind of ignore it. And then later on, you realize that, you know, actually they were definitely right. You know, through these kind of experiences, I've become less stubborn. I've become open to hearing other ideas and perspectives and then taking that into account. It's a really good growing process, to be honest. So what you eat is important as well. And if you look at this study, it says that high carbohydrate diets and foods containing things like tryptophan, foods containing melatonin, which you've probably all heard of, and foods containing ph phytonutrients like cherries can improve sleep as well. So diet is very crucial. And to be honest, everything links together. Mental health, if you're anxious, it'll impact your sleep. So your health is like this one massive system where everything's impacting everything else. And as a quick bonus tip, if you're eating earlier as well, you will reduce your symptoms of reflux and reduce your chance of getting gastroesophageal reflux disease, which if you're Indian like me or you like your spicy foods, it's a really key point. Step five is to minimize your fluids. But before I go through this point, let's remind ourselves of why sleep is important. It's not only how you come across, but studies have shown that if you sleep for too little or even too long, you increase your risk of so many diseases like cardiovascular diseases and chronic diseases, and ultimately your risk of mortality or death as well. So that's why we've built this eight step sleep guide that we can all follow and it's really simple. What I recommend is stopping fluids two hours before you go to sleep. And this scientific advice is based on people who have nocturia, which is nighttime urination. But it still applies here as well. To be honest, what I actually do is I stop drinking lots of fluids two hours before I go to sleep and I just take sips here and there for comfort. And before I did this, I'd wake up at least once per night to go and urinate, which really ruins your sleep. You get interrupted sleep, you get up, you get the light in your eyes, which makes it even harder to get back to sleep. And it's just not good. So step six is to keep it quiet. I don't want to be Captain Obvious, but this research shows that environmental noise can ruin your sleep, which is probably quite obvious. In terms of white noise, research doesn't show any clear benefit, but it doesn't show any major negatives either. So you can try it and see if it works for you. What I would recommend is if you live somewhere where it's very tranquil and it's very quiet, then you probably don't need the white noise. But if you live somewhere where it's quite busy and loud, like the center of London or New York or wherever you live, then maybe the white noise can help drown out these other environmental noises. But also if you tend to go to sleep and obviously your mind is racing and these things, then people have said that white noise can help uh, give them something different to focus on. So just try it out and see what works for you. Step seven, keep it cool. The optimal sleep temperature according to science is about 19 to 21 degrees Celsius. Research suggests starting at 20 degrees and then moving up or down from there. Just working out what works for you and what your optimal is. And from what I've seen in the literature, it suggests that it's very age dependent. So what I do is I just open the windows because I don't have AC. But if you have AC, then obviously you can control the temperature more tightly. And if you're like mega loaded, then get an eight sleep mattress. It's this latest like tech mattress. It uses AI to find your optimal sleeping temperature and it can warm up as you go through the night to wake you up more naturally. It's very cool. I can't afford one. And this is one tip I kind of wish I realized way earlier. Step eight is to exercise, but not too late. I always exercise in the evening because I'm too lazy to get up in the morning and exercise for work. And people always told me not to exercise in the evening because it was ruining my sleep. Oh, how wrong they were. This research shows that evening exercise actually improves your sleep, just like morning exercise can, uh, as long as you don't do any vigorous activity less than one hour before you go to bed. So basically just don't exercise too late. So that's my eight step scientific sleep guide, but there's some other points that are worth mentioning. The first one is taping your mouth shut. Now I tried this for quite a while, but basically because of my skincare routine, I use things like creams and tretinoin. It doesn't stick to my mouth. If anyone's found a solution for this, then let me know. I would like to do it. And I will be making a video on my skincare routine in the future. So subscribe for that. Other things to do is to gamify your sleep. I have a couple of friends who have whoops. I don't know anyone who's got an eight sleep mattress because I'm not in those circles. 
cycles, but these things can track your sleep and they can help you kind of check your score. You can make small changes, recheck your score, and then really gamify your sleep to optimize it further. And things like mindfulness have been shown to improve your sleep as well. So stay tuned for how-to guides on that. And of course, the final thing worth mentioning is that you just need to fix the fundamentals. Things like good diet, having good relationships, mental clarity, all of these things will contribute to a better sleep. So to summarize, no light at night, stop caffeine way earlier than you think, take some sleep supplements, stop eating about three hours before you go to sleep, stop drinking about two hours before you go to sleep, minimize the noise and maybe try white noise, keep your room to 19 to 21 degrees and find the optimal for you. And then finally, exercise in the evening, but obviously not one hour before bed. Do these eight things and you'll wake up energized, happy and ready to tackle the day. To quote Benjamin Franklin, early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise. I hope this was helpful for you and I'll see you next week. Sleep well.